Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel and of course as we look at the operating systems of Windows well we talked about Windows 3 and 3.1, 3.11 for work groups um, then <coughs> came for the consumer uh, a big hit and it was Windows 95. Windows 95 was the um, a game changer in Windows. It was something that actually um, changed the way we would use the PC even more than Windows 3. Windows 3 was really just a graphic user interface on top of DOS. And Windows 95 also was built on top of DOS, but it actually came with many improvements and changes over time. And one of them was the plug and play. It was the first time that uh, you could actually buy a device, just plug it in, and it'd be, of course, if the drivers are there, it'd be just installing itself, and it was easy. And Windows 3, you had to, you know, install the software, do all sorts of stuff, and it was not always easy. Windows 95 made the hardware uh, install a, a better thing, an easier thing. Uh, to some extent, we still had quite a few little problems with Windows 95 on the uh, installs of USB devices sometimes. So you see here what it looked like. And uh, Windows 95 was the first operating system actually to um, really uh, have what we call 32-bit mode in it. Um, Windows 3 was really at 16 bits mostly. Windows 95 had, of course, a change here, and Windows 95 introduced, of course, the 32-bit uh, architecture, which actually was the start, was what would be fully implemented um, later on, but actually let Windows do multitasking uh, easily. The minimum requirement for Windows 95 was believe it or not, when compared to our machines today, a 386DX machine running at 20 megahertz or higher. And it was also required to run MS-DOS 3.2 or later. And so that is kind of interesting or capable of running Windows 3 or later. The memory requirements, four megabytes minimum requirement, eight megabytes. When you compare today that we are actually using RAM at the gigabytes range and rather than megabytes, 70 megabyte hard disk space for installation. I remember first time I installed Windows 95, I had a 500 megabyte hard drive, which I thought was huge. Well, it wasn't that big and it was very expensive back then. The uh, requirement and was the first actually Windows to actually come on CD-ROM. So you could have the floppy version, which was something like 25, three and a half inch floppies. I had that version. So the install for that was kind of long. And, uh, but they had of course a CD-ROM version because CD-ROM drives started to show up even though they're extremely expensive. It was the first Windows to require VGA graphics. That was the minimum requirement. You couldn't run anything that was not VGA graphics. So uh, that was kind of uh, cool to uh, to check out. As you see here, it had Notepad. Whoa! The um, operating system also required um, that you had a mouse or pointing device. And if you wanted sound, audio card or spe and speakers. So that was not a requirement. You could have it without sound, but it was better with. And of course, modem, fax modem, if you wanted to uh, go into BBSs and stuff like that. It eventually had a version of Windows of uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer, but at first it did not because uh, Windows 95, when it was actually released on August 24th, 1995, uh, the internet was still not much of a thing. It was really the start of the internet, and uh, I believe in '95 that's when the uh, first browsers came out, and um, that would uh, change the world. With, of course, the uh, World Wide Web being 
something brand new at the time. Um, little did we know. So Internet Explorer came on to Windows 95 later on. Also, the network side to get the internet was not implemented within Windows 95 from its install. You actually had to have, you know, often the, the uh, network card would actually add a couple of modules and a couple of add-ons that would enable network for internet access. Um, of course, it had its dependence on MS-DOS, uh, definitely. Some people still complaining that uh, too much of it was still, um, you know, on top of DOS. But uh, DOS drivers were no longer needed for CD-ROM access uh, when Windows 95 would boot up. Um, actually, it had its own managers, which meant that it just ran all of those straight from the operating system rather than having to have, like Windows 3, all the required drivers for all the external devices, extended memory, and so on. So uh, this is uh, pretty cool. You had, of course, safe mode, and you could exit to DOS if you needed. It um, was a big improvement in, in many um, aspects also for stability. Windows 95 was a huge increase in stability compared to what Windows 3 was. Windows 95, even though still crashing a lot, was not that bad, actually. And um, we did have crashes, but it was not as frequent as Windows 3. So it was a big improvement there. You finally had access to 32-bit file access with long names. Because before you had, you know, a very limited amount of uh, space for characters for the names of your files. Now you could have long names if you wanted, which was pretty nice. Um, so Internet Explorer did not ship with Windows 95 at first, but um, Windows um, when Windows 95 was actually released, um, there was eventually something called the Plus Pack add-on that was available, and that included Internet Explorer 1.0. And Windows 95 OEM Service Release 1, which is kind of a service pack, was released later on to add functionalities and include an Internet, Internet Explorer version 2 uh, with DOS. So this is kind of an interesting uh, little development there. And, uh, well, it was a big hit. Uh, people were waiting in line to get Windows 95 back then. And uh, that was pretty crazy when you think about it. There was a maximum amount of physical RAM the PC could actually, Windows 95 could detect, which was 480 megabytes. I don't know a lot of people actually had that, but uh, definitely it was a game changer. It was something that people related to. It definitely changed, um, you know, with the plug and play feature that added the possibility to really make it easy to install devices was quite interesting and quite cool to see. So Windows 95, I would give Windows 95 a score of 9 out of 10 for the innovation, for the feel of really, for the first time, having a operating system working, not just some kind of front end of DOS, even though it was still a front end of DOS, and had it much more capabilities and, uh, you know, multimedia, was uh, getting ahead here, and there was a lot more that you could see. The VGA requirement meant that graphics and everything you do was also better. So uh, it was a nice one. Really enjoyed using it back then, uh, definitely. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and hope you enjoy this look back at a different version of Windows 95.1.